29 years ago today, riots erupted in Los Angeles. It was caught on camera and it shocked America, so much of America, much like the death of George Floyd. This morning, we have a special guest who has a unique perspective on both stories that gripped the nation. Laura Dean King is Rodney King's daughter. She's the CEO of the Rodney King Foundation. So welcome, Laura. We appreciate you. And thank you for starting your day with us. Um, no. mm -hmm. You know, I can't imagine being you, uh, your other family members, and watching old footage of what happened to your father. It did, though, spark conversations across the country in black and white homes, all homes, about racial injustice, policing, police brutality, um, what is done in the light, and whether anyone will be held accountable. Tell us, as you look back then on what happened to your dad, and as you look at where we are today and what we've seen caught on camera, the biggest differences then and now? Um, the name. <laughs> the name. That's mm. it. Because there's no, it's still the same thing, you know, and here we are 30 years mm. later. Um, yeah. it, it's only difference is we have hashtag now and we have someone else. So that's it. Mm. There's no difference, which is unfortunate because we're in you know, America, the land of the free, and yet we're not. <laughs> so it's just sad. Because of that outrage, because of what happened 29 years ago and, and how it changed America at the time we thought was gonna change America, are you surprised that nothing has changed almost 30 years later? We're still seeing this? You know what's crazy? I'm very hopeful. Um, I'm very hopeful, but then again, boom, when something changes, we have another hashtag, we have another. And look, just, just how many cases we've had since last week. There's already, I can't even mm -hmm. yeah. put a number on how many people have been killed. So it's like, what are we really protecting and killing? Cause it's not protecting and serving. It's not protecting at all. Mm. So it's just, it's just unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It really is. And they, and they wonder why people have a fight or flight when they're pulled over because they're running from their life. They're right. running for their life. There's a possibility that they might not make it. That's really why people run. It's not because whatever the case may be, literally nine times out of 10, they think they're gonna be killed in some way. So it's just a natural reaction. It's just unfortunate. I think I think their whole structure should be yeah. redone because obviously you guys are using the same system mm -hmm. and we're still in the same position. And yet we're supposed to call you when we need something like I don't understand mm -hmm. that. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, it doesn't make sense to me. And and I'm glad you mentioned that it earlier. Mm -hmm. It was said that dad was on PCP, but that night he was tested and it was clear. Uh -huh. However, I can't speak for the nights after that, but that particular night, it's like they do that. The same thing with George Floyd. He was on this, he was on that. Okay. That's besides, yeah, it's besides the point. You killed yeah. him. You know, luckily, luckily yeah. my dad yeah. was the size that he was. He was in great shape because he would have died. And a lot of people don't know that. But who else is here? We've been talking about the 29th uh, anniversary of the uh, Rodney King yeah. verdict, uh, where the four officers got off, acquitted uh, for beating him uh, in the uh, L.A. riots that pursued. We've been talking to his daughter, Laura Dean King. Uh, so let's bring her back in here to get more perspective on that and what's going on today. But, Laura, I, before we move on, I, I want to actually go back uh, to that time. Sure. You know, 29 years ago, you're probably a kid at the time, probably so very young. Um, I don't even know how old you were, but it, the feeling when, when you when you see that you go through the trial and you see that these police officers get off. What are the emotions? Was it it was it sadness that led to anger? Or how were you feeling at the time? How were you and your your family feeling at that time? I was eight years old. Um, by the way, it was mm. unbelievable because I had never witnessed anything like this. So to me, it was like. It was obvious. It should have been obvious. Um, it was a little devastating because you can't justify that. There's nothing he did to justify that. And mm -hmm. even when they put the thing that everybody doesn't know, they weren't the original officers that pulled him over. The original officers that put him over had the situation under control. The other guys came in and took over. And so my mm -hmm. question is, what did you need to take over? Cause it was already under control yeah so obviously mm -hmm. this was the norm you know this is the norm in america this is not anything new they just so happen to be videotaped which lets me know that again this is the norm this is they didn't know they were being videotaped yeah so and i remember back then 
Yeah, I, I remember right. back then that there were several reactions from black America, right? Mm -hmm. And then white America, yeah. mm -hmm. shock, mm -hmm. horror. Black America, though, was happy your father survived it and was horrified, right. but welcome that right. there was evidence to say, see, mm -hmm. see America, because the people happy that you as an eight-year-old little girl was sheltered enough to say this isn't normal but people who have been brutalized mm -hmm. by lapd for a very long time welcome yeah. that footage to say this is what they've been doing to us and it reminds us of the people in minneapolis who have said the same and so many other cities what mm -hmm. happened to george floyd it did mm -hmm. remind people of your dad's experience when you saw it did the yep. trauma come pouring back yeah absolutely Times 20. And I always question myself, you know, we see homeless people, less fortunate people talking to themselves, going crazy. And I wonder how many of those people were George Floyd. I wonder how many of those men were my mm. dad that were judging mm. that weren't yeah. videotaped and never came back from that. Yeah. And it's like we look at people yeah. and like they lost their mind. But in fact, that probably happened to them. And nine times out of 10, they survived it. And that's the aftermath. And so I, it just, it's just unfortunate. It really is. So when you get the judgment in the uh, Derek Chauvin trial and he's guilty on, on all three counts, I mean, it, it, nothing is going to overturn what happened to your dad and, and the justice he didn't get 29 years ago. But was there a sense of justice that you received from that trial? You know what? It was a it was a I was holding my breath and didn't realize it. And when they said it, it was like, <gasps> but then I instantly again yeah. felt sorry for his daughter because I was the same age as his daughter. Mm. Around the same time, and the mm. only difference is there's no justice for her because she will never hug her daddy again. She mm. will never get yeah. any of those moments. So we're all celebrating, mm. but in fact, I'm, my heart is hurt because I know how that feels. My dad didn't die that night, but a big part of him died. He was never the same. And yeah. you know, America says, "Okay, mm. here's that. Go back to normal. What's normal? What's normal after that?" Mm. You yeah. know, and it's, when she will never your dad have those moments. Yeah. Your dad's no longer no, with sorry. us. Um, right. Yeah, no, your dad's no longer with us and our condolences. But I wonder if over the years you all talked about some of the stories in the headlines, some of the police brutality, unarmed black men um, and women uh, shot and killed. And what what did he think about how the years unfolded um, after what happened to him? It was a slap in the face for him, as for all of us, because it's like, we're still here. And they say, uh, you're so angry. Everybody's angry because we're dying. Mm -hmm. We're dying. Like, how yeah. could you not be? You know, how could you tell somebody how to express their feelings about something like this? This is not a small matter. This is like literally people's lives. So how could you tell someone else how to feel about taking our lives? Mm -hmm. More mm -hmm. people are speaking up. Yeah, because nothing's changing. It's obvious. So now America has to explain this to their kids because we have social media, we have Google, and they're talking. You can't lie to your kid and make up a lie while yeah. a person's getting murdered. And they can watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like just you said, you go through it every it single time you see something like that happen. You, I'm thinking about Dante Wright, where you were talking about your dad and the cops had things under control and then somebody else steps in and then all of a sudden everything right. all, you know, right. what breaks loose. Uh, so you founded the Rodney King Foundation shortly after your dad died in uh, 2012. Uh, what's his mission and, and how deeply are you involved in, in trying to get the uh, George Floyd Justice and Policing Act passed? You know, I started it, um, I used to go to Skid Row twice a month and feed the homeless and my dad was still living at the time and he would get mad at me for spending my own money. So he said, start a foundation, start a foundation. And I was like, no. Then after he died, I was like, what can I do? So I literally started. Um, and then what was the second question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, the well, the, the, trying to be said, being involved in the, uh, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that they're trying to get past the Senate right now. How involved are you in that? Uh, how closely are you watching? You know what's crazy? <clears throat> I try to like, I have to watch it in segments because it triggers something yeah. really bad because this is obvious. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't even be dealing mm -hmm. with this. So I have yeah. a hard time with everything. I have to, you know, mm -hmm. it's really hard, honestly. And that's yeah. something that I struggle with because it's like, it's obvious we're still here. And it's like, this is a slap in the face. You know, 30 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm 37. Well, I've been yeah, going through you, this my whole life. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, it has uh, taken up so much of your life. And so I wonder, you mentioned Gianna Floyd, George Floyd's yeah. little girl, three yeah. years old. We've seen the footage. My daddy is going to change the world. Uh, the president uh, said she told him mm. my daddy changed the world when he gave his address to Congress mm. last night. If you could talk to Gianna about what life for her could be like relating your own experience, what would you tell her? I wish, I wish it was something I could, but that's something between her and God. Her mom won't even help sorry. her. That's something between you and that's her. God can't even, God is the only person that can help her because there's been times with my mom and that don't even help. And that's something that it sucks because she will never get those moments. When she get married, her daddy's not gonna be yeah. there. When she graduates from mm. middle school, her dad's mm. gonna be there. And see, the world painted him as this picture, but she knows who her dad is. And that's the thing that matters the mm -hmm. most. But it's just unfortunate because basically it feels like a human sacrifice for mm -hmm. change to come. And yet this hasn't yeah. happened because we're still here. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Uh, it really is. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't wish that. Uh, and we, uh, no, yeah, nobody. Uh, even 29 years later, the scars are still evident. And we hope that you, uh, you're doing yep. what you need to do uh, to get the help that you need as well. And, Put things in God's hands is great perspective to have right now.